Yeah, so it's important to, to understand that, there, so there are two kinds of treatments. One are supportive treatments that attack certain kinds of symptoms that people may have in association with the disease. And then the other kind of treatment is a treatment that, I, that attacks the disease process itself so as to maybe ameliorate progression of the disease. So in, in my thinking, both of those kinds of treatments are important that you want, you want to have the best supportive treatment to maintain function as well as possible, but also you would like to slow the disease down because ultimately supportive treatment may keep you a little bit more functional and give you a better quality of life, um, but it won't really change the outcome of the disease in the long term. So um, I think we, we are looking at using both types of treatments. The types of treatments that we would use supportively would be if a person had seizures, we would treat them with medicines to reduce seizures. Um, cataplexy can be a symptom associated with MPC and there are medicines to treat that. Um, patients need um, physical therapy and occupational therapy to help them with adapting to their environment and getting around as well as possible. Patients need special education programs and speech therapy to help them with having the best communication and, and maintaining their um, functional capacity as well as possible. And in fact, we've uh, there's a recent study that um, was published from data at NIH that I was a part of. They show that in the patients that they, anal that they tested who were under age five, many of them actually had developmental delays and would have qualified for early intervention services, but they weren't in those services. Um, and maybe that's because people are focusing on the MPC and not the, develop the need for the developmental services or, or they just haven't been identified as having the developmental delays that they have. Um, but in any case, whatever the reason, it's important to, to really apply these supportive therapies early on. I mean, hearing aids for hearing loss, there, there are many supportive therapies. We have therapies for dystonia. Some of the patients get dystonia. Um, and so those, those are all important to put in place. And it, it probably is most useful for patients to either see a group of specialists that um, are specialists in each one of the types of you know, problems. So you would see a hearing specialist for the hearing and a, and a neurologist for the neurolog neurologic problems. And a, you know, maybe a psychiatrist for behavior problems and depending on what kinds of symptoms the patient has or a multidisciplinary program where you can get care for all of your problems all in one place. But those NPC is a very rare disease. So those multiple multidisciplinary clinics, I would say are, are very few if, if they exist at all. Um, and then the disease targeted therapies are therapies that actually have an impact on the mechanism of the disease. So for instance, Miglostat, which is the only medication approved anywhere for NPC, has an impact on the accumulation of the lipids in the lysosomes so that um, it reduces those the, the, the lipid accumulation and presumably reduces toxicity, although it may have many kinds of mechanisms in the cell. But in any case, it, it does, it's very difficult to show the effect of miglostat in a short-term study, like a year or so. And it's very difficult to do a controlled trial of anything in neiman pick type C because the disease is so slowly progressive. But um, in, in more recent studies that have spanned, you know, as much as 10 years, uh, miglostat has been shown to prolong life and to reduce um, the, to, to increase the time before patients develop problems like swallowing problems that are, that are serious problems. Um, and so miglostat does have an impact on the disease progression, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't keep the disease from progressing. So obviously we need more treatments to add on to that. And in trials, there are a number of treatments in trials. Um, one is aramoclamol from Orphazyme. One is um, adrabetadex, which is an intrathecal cyclodextrin therapy from um, Malincrot has that right now. And then there's also Cyclotherapeutics has an IV cyclodextrin. And then there are a number of other things that are on their way toward development. There, there are programs to look at gene therapy as well as other agents that impact the, impact the cell and, and change metabolism. Um, and I'm not gonna name them all off, but, um, but I think that the, feel, it, the hopeful thing is that we would be able to get um, combinations of these types of agents, many of which have a different impact on the mechanism of MPC, and you would probably have to use them in combination like they do for chemotherapy for cancer to really um, 
try to reverse the disease process as much as possible. And then that those would make NPC into a, a more treatable disease. 